All right, we start with chapter 9, and this is about the 20s and the 30s. Classic, what goes up must come down type of uh, chapter. Uh, the Roaring Twenties, things start off wonderful. After World War I, America sees unprecedented prosperity. People are doing whatever they want, going out, having a great time, really enjoying life, maybe a little too much. And everybody's getting rich. Everybody's doing really well. Everybody thinks that this is just never going to end. And so that's how the 20s start. Uh, so all these soldiers come back. Um, they start getting jobs. They start uh, making lots of money. And one of the things that uh, really starts picking up... Now, if you've never heard jazz, jazz is... Um, a very emotional music. It's it's played on the spot. There's no sheet music. You know, if you're in the band or something, you have certain um, rhythms, certain notes that you play on a certain time period. Whereas jazz, it is what, however you feel like the the notes should be arranged at that moment. And so things are made up on the spot, and it's a unique music. And you know, it's not for everybody, but it is. Um, something that just really catches on in the 20s. Along with uh, the new music and the new uh, culture that seems to be waving over the country and the world, um, something happens, if you remember, the 18th Amendment that we studied earlier uh, in 1919 made alcohol illegal. And so people still want to drink. And you can see here the prohibition alcohol was already going down and then it becomes illegal and it plummets but then it comes right back up to these levels more than before uh, they got rid of it and so people figured out a way around the, uh, the whole thing made alcohol illegal and gangsters um, crime families and so forth start making speakeasies. And speakeasies are first vocabulary word. It is where you have illegal clubs or bars where people could buy liquor during prohibition. And if you're not familiar with speakeasies and movies, because we haven't seen a movie about this time period in a long time, uh, somebody would go up to a door, knock on it, and then a small window would open and they would say, what's the password? And then you would say something like, Jim sent me. And if that's the right password, then they unlock the door, they let you in, and they're serving alcohol at this place. But if you didn't know the password, they wouldn't let you in. And so organized crime, people that with the muscle, with the um, guys that, that would beat you up if you snitched on them or whatever, uh, they were the only ones that could set up these places for alcohol. And people, criminals, started making a lot of money off of the um, the way that we made alcohol illegal. And that brings us to the dark side of prohibition. This created bootleggers, people that made alcohol. Well, let's just look at the definition. People who made and smuggled alcohol illegally during prohibition. Bootleggers, you can see as an, an example, they take the liquor and they put it in their boot and then they run, uh, then they go to a place where they can sell it and make lots of money. In fact, this was a, uh, a famous football play, uh, the bootleg. If the quarterback fakes the handoff and then runs with the football, pretends like he doesn't have the football and he's running the opposite way of everybody else, that's called a bootleg. And so this was a very famous expression of people who made these, uh, these alcoholic beverages, and then snuck them into places where people can buy them into these speakeasies. So that's the, the main thing right here, is that we've got uh, the Roaring Twenties, everybody's looking for a good time, and this leads to uh, people wanting to drink alcohol. They ban alcohol, and in order to get around it, they create speakeasies, and the people that supply the speakeasies are bootleggers.